Hello everyone, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Well, I am drinking my cup of coffee this morning because uh, I always have a cup of coffee when I talk about money. <laughs> Don't go away, because this is really important. Um, I've got some statistics and some information for you that I think is going to help you to understand how important it is to get your financial house in order. And, um, you know, I've made as many mistakes in the past as, as probably any of you have, and I, I do regret the way that I did not have a good financial ethic you know i didn't understand money i never was taught i never was taught it in my house when i was a child and um so i i don't don't blame it on that but i just didn't ever take the time marie burns is one of our bloggers and she actually wrote this great article and she put it in the context of having your financial house in order is the biggest gift that you can give yourself because um the chances are if you're married that you're going to need to be you're going to be on your own with your financial situation so it's time to prioritize you give yourself this gift of having a financial, um, you know, have financial security, having your, your house in order, as they say. Now, as I said, I, I've done this, you know, in a roundabout way too. I only recently, in the last five years, started to really take my finances seriously and realize that, you know, as, as I'm getting older, I probably, well, I'll be doing 60 and me forever, but I won't be, you know, bringing in huge amounts of money. I don't, I, I don't have that capacity or that, um, you know, opportunity uh, uh, myself. And I, and in fact, I, I, it's my choice that I will live a more minimalist life. So I've got all my order things in order though, because when, you know, if something happens to me, um, it'll be easy for my family to, to manage it all and having that financial um, you know, sort of responsibility, I think is super important. But here's some numbers that might uh, surprise you, but maybe some of you are very well aware of it. But um, did you know that 70% of married women become widows? 70%. And I know from uh, talking to women in our Patreon group and, and just talking to people in, in the comment section of the articles, there's a lot of women who've lost husbands in the last a few years they're in their 60s and have lost a partner and it's it's really hard and all the more reason now for you to take your finances seriously it's a bit of a wake up call but the other st statistic that um, marie talks about is that 80% of married women will die single 80% will die single and 80% of married men die married so it's it's up to you now to take care of yourself 90% of all women will be solely in charge of their life at some point it's a, and it's a, you know, it's a very big deal. So we need to prepare for the inevitable. And, uh, you know, if something is already, if you're already going through it, please share that in the comment section if it helps you. But uh, the reality is that women outlive men in every country in the world. So here we are. We're strong. We can do this. And I think there's some points here that, um, that Marie talks about that I think are, you know, important checkpoints to, to you know the solutions to this um fear that might creep into you when you when you read and hear that statistic that um you know that you need to do something in a very concrete and tangible way so get financially organized is the thing what is financially organized well you need to answer some questions and these are what um marie's article is all about i'll put a link to the article in the video under the video because it's really useful to read it the first one is do you know what you have that's the first question do you know what you have do you know what you have in a bank? Do you know your IRAs? Do you know your pensions? Do you know anything, any money that's coming in, Social Security? Whatever you own, do you have property? Did you invest somewhere that you didn't mention to anybody? <laughs> Um, you know, or just take a, just take a chance at something. Maybe you just you know did something by yourself. But we, when your husband was with you, you didn't. You know, you maybe he knew about it, but you you know no one else does. It's time to think about even with your husband par partner or partner still with you to take care of these things now. Make a list of all the things that you have that you own that you that where your where your finances are coming from, where they are in savings or where, you know, wherever they might be. Um, get it in writing. You know, you don't want to leave it to someone, your family particularly, to figure this all out if, if you should die. And it's really um, important. I've got a big white box. It's got, a, you know, it's got all the instructions in there. And I've also got, um, um, uh, she, uh, Marie suggests a binder. Well, I've got everything in a box and I have it in folders. So and I've, I label the folders what they are. And I write little notes that this was paid off or this was taken care of. And in case any, I mean, can you imagine how, you know, overwhelming that is for someone to, to try to deal with? And even when now that you, you've, if you've lost someone, you're, you're, you're trying to pull it all together. So it, it, to save the next, the next generation, all the, all the difficulty in finding where your assets are, you know, what you really have, put them in a binder. As she says, I put them in a box and I also, um, on my computer, I have a little fo folder on my computer. Everyone can get into my laptop and it says things to read when I die. 
and in there I've put all the things, all the papers, all the in information, but also some letters and some poems and some books to read. Music, I'd like to be played at my funeral if they have a party. I don't want to, I don't want to have a big funeral. I want to have something more joyful than that because there's going to be so much to celebrate, you know, and I would rather it be focused on that. Um, but anyway, all that's in that folder. So maybe that's an idea for you too. Marie doesn't mention that, but I think it's kind of a cool one. So detail your net worth, your, your a summary of all that you own. And, um, you know, I use color folders because I'm a color person. You know, I like, I like have things to be distinguished, put a label on it, but get that binder or that box in order and, and answer the question. Do you know what you have with a yes? Yes, I do. And I've written it all down. And don't forget that estate planning doesn't just mean the, the finances or, you know, just the, the, the assets you've got. It means your will, any trusts, uh, whether you put together a power of attorney. I have a power of attorney for my, my son because I just wanted that to be in place in case, you know, I, he needs to make decisions for me. Um, power of attorney related to health care, uh, related to finances, of course, and also related to mental health care. Because um, I made a note of that here because it's important that, you know, should you not be able to make a good decision or not, or be a little bit confused about what decisions are to be made, that a power of attorney can be put into place. You may not want to give that up, that free. I have a very good relationship with my, my family and my son, so I feel totally comfortable having shared that. And maybe that's something that you want to think about too. Coffee time. <laughs> One sec. Anyway. Most important things, do, do, do your, does your will, do your papers reflect your current wishes? You may have changed since you wrote that will. So update it, put an addendum, make some changes and, and be, now forget to copy it in all the places that you've got your will. I've only got it in three places. So I, you know, <laughs> anyway, we think about these things are the craziest times. But anyway, do all these things reflect your current wishes? Number two, question number two to ask yourself is, are your, is your family going to be able to find everything? It kind of links to the first point I made. Where is all your information? Help your family locate your bank statements and your and, and your you know your um, investments and your possessions. I mean, if you've got a, a you know a jewelry collection or you've got a, a you know some collectible that you've been saving for sixty years and and it's worth something, you know, if you've got um, anything that, that is is going to be of value, just write it down and and make sure they know. I, every time I go on a trip, I actually put the white box out, and put it on the table because I don't want, you know, it's just something happened. You have to be thoughtful of this. Also, your passwords. Make sure that someone knows your passwords. I use um, an app on online called LastPass, and uh, it's a very, very good system. You basically have one master password, and then it keeps a list of all of your um, other um, uh, passwords for all your other sites it can come really handy sometimes when you just forget that you know that password for your I don't know Skype or for some other service um, you know but it's, it's really important that you make sure that, that, that everyone knows where that your documents are make sure that um, it's clearly marked that this the folders are clearly uh, indicated and as I've mentioned I do this what to read when I die which I think is kind of helpful <laughs> third thing third question to ask yourself is where do you, where are your assets going to go? How that's the third question to ask yourself. How are you going to have your is your money going to be shared? If there's any any money to be shared, uh, and how are your possessions going to be shared? I've got like for example a painting, and one of my family members really wants it, and it's um, it won't be of interest to anyone else except that person. But on the back of the picture, I put this is going to, and um, make sure that someone knows. Uh, like for example, my ring. I pro I promised Max that he can have my gold ring because he always has liked this ring. He's always. Oh, this finger. Where's, where's my ring? Um, but um, little things, and they don't seem little. Just at, at that point, though, when people are thinking, "What should we do with this? What should we do with that?" I've got, um, I've got a. Actually, I, I did give away or burn. Excuse me, I, I destroyed all my journals. I actually went through a conversation with you guys about this, and I did actually keep one, um, one that was useful, and the other ones I let go. I just thought they weren't important for someone to read. But um, other assets, I don't have myself that many, but everybody will know my clothes can get donated and so on. But write that down and put it in your box or your folder, okay? Um, how do you want your bank accounts to be distributed? Another thing that she talks about, which is really important, is um, are things, uh, have you got a beneficiary noted on your insurance policy? So for example, on your travel insurance, um, I think you can have a beneficiary um, that overrides 
the person that you've got as your um tr your the trustee or the person that's going to be distributing all your stuff so, so if you really want to make sure that something goes to a specific person mark them as your beneficiary on any insurance policy by name and, and write it down um there's another one um since she says to add a pod or payable on death designation on that account so if you're if you're doing it for your bank account you know that on payable upon death it goes to and you know you can go through all this with maria she actually i think does some consultancy if you're interested but she's got books and things too you can refer to but i think just to review you know create a detailed list of what you've got you know where make sure that people know where it is where the list is where the documents are and then thirdly make sure that everyone in your documents you clearly state where your assets are going to go and if you do those three things, ask those three questions, one, two, three, um, it's a really good gift to yourself. And I think reading Marie's article will give you even a bit more detail. But can you see how this makes a difference? Give yourself this gift. Do it for you. Yes, it's going to help other people, but do it for yourself. So you can just go on with living now. You know you've taken care of all of that. If anything happens, you're covered. I think it's really good advice. Anyway, cheers to everybody. I hope you got through that okay without too much of a panic attack. I know money can be so sensitive, but maybe some of you have done all this and think, ah, easy peasy, it's okay. I can just forget it now, move on. And I hope that is the case. But anyway, if you have any questions, please leave it in the section below. Marie is, um, you can leave um, questions in her to, in the uh, comment section of her article and I uh, hope that it has been helpful. I hope I haven't upset too many people that were stressed about it, but hey, it's life. We've got to do the real stuff here too. But uh, take good care and know that you're loved and respected, whatever your position or your point of view. I love you all so much, genuinely, and I hope that you're well. Take good care of yourself, okay? Go out to the world, be strong, be safe, and, uh, and sparkle, okay? Sparkle in the world.